Good morning. It's time for another 4 a.m. video. This one's boiling up for a couple of days and I'm so excited to share it with you. Last evening I had the privilege of talking to some beautiful people from all over the world, the UK, New Zealand, Australia, the United States, Canada, and I was sharing with them about how to test a dream to find out if it's a worthy dream. In other words, one that we will actually take the action and create. There's a seat in the book, Equanimity, where we are standing, we the reader, we are standing at the foot of a thousand foot cliff, and Howard, our mentor, is giving us instruction on the straight and narrow way up the face of this cliff. Straight, not as an S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, not the shortest distance from where we're standing to the top, but an S-T-R-A-I-T, that circuitous route that guides us around all the dangerous spots with the best footholds and the handholds, along with pitons that have been hammered into the rock so we can clip in so that should we fall, we only fall a few feet, we can gather our wits and get back to climbing to get to the top as quickly as possible. And Harold turns to us and he looks up at this cliff and he said, have you got your E to the I? Have you got your E to the I? You might go, what is an E to an I? That's an extrinsic thing valued intrinsically, which means do you have something that you value so intrinsically, a thing that you want to create, that you're willing to do whatever is required to climb the face of this cliff? Do you have a why big enough to sustain the effort, the discipline required to do so? And we share with him our why, our E to the I. And he looks up one more time and looks at us and says, it better be a good one. Well, this morning, I want to share with you the three tests that we want to apply to any one of our dreams. They can be little dreams, big dreams, but what test do we apply to see if it's a worthy dream? Whether it should be on our dream board, that target, not our daily destination where we spend our time fantasizing, our target, where we're heading why we're taking those millimeter steps, those little steps each day to get us to that target. What is our why? Because sometimes we discover that our why is just a really good idea, but it doesn't really drive creation. We also sometimes find that our why is really important, but our intention, our reason for creating it can be harmful. For an example, I just want life to be easier and less stressful. Well, that's going to drive us into fantasy and catastrophe, not into action. So we want to engage in life, embrace principles, connect, serve, create value, contribute. I've shared those with you. That's our, our come from, our real underlying visceral fibrous in the cells of our being. Why? Because we want to engage in life. We want to embrace these obstacles. We're willing to. We want to connect and serve, create value, contribute. We're willing to do all those things. That's, that's what drives us. And so, okay. Then let's take that dream, that reason why we're climbing up this mountain, the reason why we're willing to take on this thousand foot sheer cliff and take the straight and narrow way. Is that dream going to support us? in those efforts. So three tests. Test number one, when we think about this dream, does it create spontaneous, inspired ideas that ignite our passion and drive our action? See, climbing this mountain can just be boring, mundane, burdensome, repetitive, hard, something we will not be able to sustain, or it's going to be passion-driven. We can't wait for the next handhold, the next foothold, the next piton to clip into. Yes, our muscles are aching. Og says, I'm on this earth for a purpose. That purpose is to grow into a mountain, not to shrink to a grain of sand. Henceforth, I will apply all my efforts. 
and become the highest mountain of all, and I'll strain my potential till it cries for mercy. Why would we do that? Because we have a dream that gives us inspired ideas that ignite passion and drive action. Most of those ideas will be, how can we serve people more effectively? This will be a lot of those inspired ideas. Next step, next person, next foothold, next handhold. So that's number one, test. So if your dream does that, proceed to test number two. Let's write this word down, encourage. E-N means to add to our core, our heart. It adds to our courage to stretch and grow and become the person who can climb this mountain. To have the physical, emotional, mental state to do the work. Every morning when I wake up, I look in the mirror and I say, David, what's your next fear? What is, what is your next fear? What are you afraid of? Do this with me. Take it on. Jump in because the very things you want are right behind the fear, right behind that obstacle. Our fear. Maybe I, there's some things I need to learn that I don't know. So I'll study those and apply them. These are things we want to do. Because if this dream inspires us to add to our courage, to stretch and grow and become, then we have a worthy dream. We have a worthy dream. Most, hmm, that sounded judgmental. No far too many just want circumstances to change can't I just change my outward circumstances no they won't change till we change in here and this dream is an outward stimulus to inspire inward shifts inward changes I'm going to become all that I'm meant to become I'm going to Find out if my habits of thinking will support me in this climb. Some of them will, and I'm not maximizing them, so I want to maximize those. Some of them are very unhealthy habits of thinking, and they're going to cause me to slip and fall and slip and fall till I'm so discouraged I don't want to climb anymore. So I want to find out which ones fall into that category, and I want to replace those with good and healthy habits. Because my habits of thinking are going to either support me or sabotage me in this most difficult part of the climb. So I'm going to find out what they are. I'm going to take them on with courage, and I'm going to create those shifts in my life. James Allen, in, in a man, as a man thinketh, wrote, he said, let a man radically alter his thoughts. And remember, this was written way back when things weren't politically correct. So speaking of humankind... Let a man radically alter his thoughts, and he will be astonished at the rapid transformation it will affect in the material conditions of his life. In other words, if we've got habits of thinking that aren't supporting us, we shift them. We create a healthy habit. Wow, we are astonished how much quicker we can climb and with greater levels of ease. So test two. Does your dream, there it is, does it encourage you to stretch and grow and become so that you can be the person who can handle this climb? There's a very good chance that you can't get to where you want to be thinking the way you're currently thinking. I want to shift that. Third test, it fosters abundance. We want so badly to share it with others so that it will inspire them to climb and, as importantly, show them how to climb, how to create. That's abundance, fostering abundance. So those are the three tests. If you write down your dream and you say, okay, does my dream create spontaneous inspired ideas? that ignite passion, the gift we're given to sustain the work of creation, and does it drive passion-driven action? 
Good, test one. Test two, does it encourage me to stretch and grow and become, to take on those unhealthy habits of thinking and make shifts and maximize, as importantly, maximize those habits that will support me? And third, does it foster abundance? Am I creating it just so I feel better about myself or am I creating it so that I can serve other people more effectively? Here's a question for you. I have a worthy dream. It passes all three tests. And now I'm willingly embracing the structure because the structure supports me in the creation of my dream. It doesn't do this to me. It does this to me. It's the only way an entrepreneur will embrace structure is if it supports in the creation of this dream. Here's the question. As I become a better person, a better version of me. What's the likelihood I will be able to serve people more effectively, be more available, more whole and complete, more intuitive, more willing to take action on those intuitive thoughts about a person? Ask those questions nobody else would ask. Hear things nobody else would hear. Very high. In the mathematical hierarchy of life, Intrinsically valuing people is at the very top. Right next to it is your E to the I. Your reason, your dream, that thing that you're creating, that outward thing that drives inward improvement. And third, we intrinsically value the structure. We willingly embrace it because it supports us. It becomes the ultimate invitation to freedom. So this morning, just take a moment, write down your dream, apply the three tests. Don't get discouraged because this may be part of the challenge in the climb. If I've had a dream that's not supporting these three tests and driving my willingness to embrace the structure, then maybe I need to shift dreams. Maybe I need to find that thing and not maybe <laughs> imperative, essential. It's the number two mathematical measurement in the hierarchy of life. Value people, have a dream we intrinsically value we're creating, and third, we're embracing the structure to create it. Well, there it is for this morning. Take this, apply it. Let's get our dreams created. We want to have dream creators, people who actually create their dreams or living their dreams and are excited to tell other people how to do it. Far too many of us are just so beat up by life, we just want it to be easier. And I said, wrong planet, it is the wrong planet. May we this morning, in our hunger for success, our thirst for happiness, and peace of mind, may we act lest we fall into that terrible and dark place, that dungeon of despair and discouragement. Let us this morning command and obey our own command. Let's identify our dream, let's test it, and let's get to work creating it as we touch <laughs> the timeline of our life.